All right, you clicked on the thumbnail. You want to know what I want to know. How does Premiere Pro run on the new Mac Mini M1? The M1 Mac Mini, it's right here in my hands. This is the real deal. This isn't clickbait. Got the new Mac Mini uh, with the M1 chip inside of it. Also, I maxed this thing out as far as we can with the current date and time with the models that they have. This is um, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as a two terabyte hard drive. So I wanted to max this out because I haven't bought a new computer in a while. I've been running this old thing back here. This is my late 2013 MacBook Pro, fully specced out, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD in there. And I think it was just about time for me to upgrade. I mean, I wanted to see if this would actually make an improvement on video editing. Um, I know that Premiere Pro isn't fully supported with the new M1 chip in the Mac Mini yet, but with Rosetta, you could still run Premiere Pro on the Mac Mini. So how does it hold up with rendering times and, and performance? Uh, stick around and we're gonna get into this thing here and we're gonna find out. Or you could skip ahead, but just, just watch the ads. Okay, there's really not much to the packaging here with the Mac Mini, as well as the body hasn't changed at all. Um, so we're not gonna unbox this thing. If you wanna see that, there's plenty of videos out there online, but I wanna get to the nitty gritty here. Um, so with this Mac Mini here, it comes with the Mac Mini and it comes with a cable for it. But let's talk about some of the physical specs real quick. As you can see, not much has actually changed body-wise, but if we start looking at the back and the ports here, we have a power adapter, we have the ethernet cable, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, don't be confused that that's not really speed difference between Thunderbolt 4 and 3. What that means is that Thunderbolt 4 gives it the awesome power to power those Mac Pro screens. Um, has HDMI 2.0 and two USB-A ports, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, if you looked at the keynote, there is a fan in this Mac Mini, and it's from from the looks of it, it does look like the fan is probably about half of the components in here. So there's a lot of space in there that Apple can still improve on. But those are the physical aspects about the Mac Mini. So it does come with the cable, like I said, there's a power button. And let's get into how does this perform with Premiere Pro. This does turn on fairly quick. If I hit the power button in the back, see the light, there's the light there. And let's see if the screen pops up here. How long does this take to boot? It's loading, got that Apple sound back all over again. Love that boot up sound. Reminds me of Wally. -E. There we go, it didn't take long. Let's log in. All right, I know that we've seen performance gains based on Apple's keynote about the Mac mini, but that's based on Final Cut Pro 10. Now, let's not have a Final Cut or Premiere Pro or DaVinci is better than one or another. They're all different tools. Um, everyone uses different tools, just like a hammer. You know, you don't have to sell somebody on the right carpenter and how to use the right hammer or which one's better for them. They're just different tools for different workflows. There's not one that's better than the other. It just works differently for everybody else. But with that, when Final Cut Pro switched to Final Cut Pro 10, I was a big Final Cut Pro 10 adopter, and I used that for a couple of years. And then I started getting to After Effects a lot more, and you know, it just worked well with After Effects and Premiere Pro. So my workflow switched over to Premiere Pro, which I'm totally fine with using Final Cut Pro 10. I just prefer Premiere Pro for my workflow. It's been my workflow for a few years, and I don't want to disrupt that at this moment. Um, but given the performance gains, I may switch back to Final Cut Pro 10. As you can see, I've got Premiere Pro on this side, and I've got Final Cut Pro on this side. What I've taken is a 4K video clip, clipped it down to five minutes on both timelines, did a little bit of color grading on each of it, and I'm gonna show you render times between these two programs here. And when I render out, I'm gonna render them out to be 4K. What's interesting is, I don't know if you've seen my channel before, but I don't ever export to 4K. I'm usually a 1080 person because of this machine right here. I've been keeping it at 1080. And frankly, I'm fine with 1080, 
I may grow up someday and do 4K, but I'm fine with 1080. But in this example, we're gonna export 4K footage, five minutes each timeline. Let's go check it out now. So there are the results there. Final Cut Pro renders this right under three minutes, but the Mac Mini does render the Premiere Pro footage at just a little over five minutes. So that's pretty decent given that comparison. But let's take a look at things in the grand scheme of things. My old machine's about seven years old. Let's check out the render times on that. So I, I mean, these are just render times. Obviously performance is gonna change given the, the, the video quality that I view the timeline while I'm editing, as well as how many different layers I add on there. So far, I'm very, very impressed with what the M1 Mac Mini can do with Premiere Pro. I think I'm gonna stay there for now. I'm not ready to change my workflow back to Final Cut Pro just because of all the other Adobe tools that I use with Adobe Premiere Pro. So keep in mind at the top of its game, this MacBook Pro right here costed, I think it was a little over 3,000 uh, US, but this Mac mini right here is about 1699, fully decked out as far as we can go. So that's about like half the price in this machine right here. Of course, it's not a laptop, so I can't take it around with me, but it's a pretty good machine and it's actually very, very, very quiet. Speaking of quiet, I wanted to do another 4K render test using a 2019 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM and fully decked out there. Let's check out the render times. Same footage on that machine. So there you have it. The render speeds on the 2019 MacBook Pro is almost comparable to the same of the Mac Mini M1 doing the Premiere Pro same render. It's pretty insane because if you think about it, that machine at the top of its game was a little over 3,000 as well. And this machine is about half the price of that. So I think that Premiere Pro actually runs really well on the new M1 Mac Mini. You'll have to let me know your thoughts. What do you think about it? Are you going to get one? Because I think it's pretty good bang for your buck. Not to mention one other thing is this MacBook Pro right here, as well as the 2019 MacBook Pro, they were loud with their fans. Haven't heard a thing, haven't heard a single thing rendering any of these two clips on this computer here and doing other things as well. But this is just the beginning. There's lots more to come about the Mac Mini M1. If you wanna find out more and if you found value in this, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts. Are you gonna get one? Are you thinking of getting one? Or are you thinking of getting an Air or a Pro? And if you found value in this video, which I hope that you did, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this channel to be this camera and tech channel and so far it's been a good time so thanks for watching and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace